time to start the carburetor rebuild. Um, before I can actually do that though, um, I have taken this shaft out and uh, it is kind of, I don't know, it's a throttle, choke, throttle, throttle. Um, and given them a clean up and also I wanted to check for wear. Now it's not perfect, I will say that, but the ridge is so very slight at the moment, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, I've got new seals and I'm assuming, and maybe I'm assuming wrongly, we'll find out that those seals will work fine. Um, if they don't and I, I discover I still have a leak then, obviously that's something I will have to deal with. Um, I've cleaned these up and given them a coat of that uh, special paint that I use. The next thing to do is to pry this out. There seems to be some springs in there. I guess they're holding the seals in place. So somehow I've got to get this little, I think it's a brass cap here. I've got to get that out before I can take the seals out. I don't think I can take the seals out without removing that, but that is something I will find out. Uh, but this is all part of the, the carburetor rebuild. And it looks like they're a little bent in a couple of places, so I'll make sure I get those uh, sorted out. They're obviously not part of the service kit, they'll be part of the rebuild kit. That is, uh, I'm mean, saying this brass piece here. So uh, let's get those out, and once I figure out how I get it out, I will let you know. Um, I may even show you, but uh, I can't guarantee that at the moment because it doesn't look like it's going to be easy. <laughs> so there we are. That's now getting ready. Um, you will need these items. This is a 5 16th, and that's for these little nuts. Sorry, that's for this nut. Um, and you will need a drift pin to push out this pin, which goes through here, and obviously then through the shaft here. Uh, the size of this particular drift is a 332nd. So you want to make sure you uh, get yourself a, a decent set of um, uh, drifts like these, okay? Or punches, sorry, you know, call them punches, not drifts. Uh, when it's brass, it's a drift. When it's steel, it's a punch. Hmm, wonder where that came from. All right, um, and this is another, huh? this is like a firkin advert, isn't it? Salvo Auto Sol, that's what I uh, used to clean these up. I just uh, gave them a quick rub and uh, cleaned up my shaft. <laughs> gave that a good old rub, you know what I mean? Hey? Um, and then obviously I have the screws which go through and into here and they're countersunk. So there's only one way the screws will go in and uh, that should dictate to you which way around this goes but you will have to check that because of the uh, the angle of the dangle all right time to move on and let's see what we can do next okay i have uh, got the shaft in now and put in the uh, choke plate mixture plate whatever you want to call it um i got the seals in here but i just wanted to show you how these seals go now, what I believe I'm correct in saying is you no longer need this dish, this spring, and this retainer. This is what I believe, because the uh, washer was to prevent the spring from wearing out the cork washer that was in there, and this was just to hold everything in place. I don't think that's needed anymore. With this new system, <coughs> And you know, it does come with instructions and shows you that this seal goes on here this way, just like that. Just slide it on down. Then this goes on here and you push it in there. And I'm going to get a deep socket in a minute and just tap it in. And just you just bring it level with this surface here. And this then prevents any kind of movement because it fits there snugly and a word of warning I did it don't you I pushed it in too far on the other side and the only way I could get it out was to put my whole carburetor or this part of the carburetor into the freezer 
because then it shrinks it shrinks in on itself which made the the seal then removable um, or seal or guide whatever you want to call it uh, but it, <laughs> whoa that was that, that gave me a few moments because if i couldn't get it out i was going to have to buy a whole new kit yeah i'd have to destroy it getting it out but i i did succeed in getting it out but uh, yeah be very careful of that don't don't push it in too far um i'm gonna get a, as i said i'm gonna get a little socket now a uh, long socket and just just tap that in and then that side will be done and then i'll start putting the rest of the stuff on there you go that's it for the moment right this is kind of jumping around a bit um i'm gonna do this i i just want to double check the um the which way round items go on it uh but before i do that we've got the uh, uh throttle stop here and it comes with this washer this looks or oh, sorry seal i mean awfully small However, it does go <laughs> with a little bit of effort ah, over the thread and forms a seal. Then obviously you can screw it in here, grabbing your trusty, trusty screwdriver. And we will be adjusting this later. For the moment, I just want to get it in there get it out of the way so that I know that's one more seal done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw it all the way down. I'm not gonna jam it down. Okay, that's it, it's stopped. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Then we go to the instructions, which I'll, you know, I'll show you and tell you exactly how you should set this for basic mixtures, not necessarily the running mixtures, because that you do when the car's running and you make your adjustments there. But I just wanted to get that in there. So that's the baby, it's in there. These are the springs that I got from uh, my local Ace Hardware, uh, same as these screws. Uh, still waiting for my lifting pin seal. You can see that there, the little rubber seal, um, which is annoying because I can't put this carburetor together. Although in fairness, I haven't finished polishing everything yet. And also, yes, of course, I've got this to put on and I've got the, uh, the diaphragm to put on here. So, all right, uh, next thing will be to finish the assembly on this shaft, and that's lovely and firm now. It doesn't move around. It, it's excellent. And I took the opportunity, and that's up to you, but whilst it was out, I polished it. Why not? When it came from the factory, it was nice and new. Look at that. Lovely. Perfect fit. And do be careful when you're putting this back in. Make sure you get it right the right way around because it's got a chamfer on it, okay? Or a bevel, whichever word you want to use. Um, and then it's in that position that it makes that perfect seal. Because if you try to put it the other way around, it ain't going to work and you're going to have all sorts of troubles. Um, again, take lots of photographs like I did. Okay, all right. So uh, next, let's get the pieces onto here. Right, now it's time to start putting these little beasties back on uh, getting that shut now this is the stop and you just need to line up the holes uh, kind of like that you get your pin Okay, got the pin in now, and there it is, with the stop in the right position. Next, this little beastie goes on here. Now, I'm not going to tighten that up yet because that's, that's going to be a little bit of adjustment that's going to be required on that. And in fact, looking at this, I see that my little bolt is kind of bent. I want to make sure I get that back how it was. So let me see here. No, nope, one more, one more, one more face. Only one more face. Go on. Get on there, you bitch. Oh, you really don't want to, do you? Ah, because of the bend, baby. I 
you got the bins. Okay, so there it is. Okay, all right, let's just get that bolt done up. Well, not tight, of course. And then finally, this goes on. And again, I'm not gonna do it up tight. I'm, I'm gonna do it up so that it stays on there. Um, but I'm not gonna do anything up tight because uh, it's all gonna move when I get it on the vehicle. So for the moment, I'm just gonna leave it kinda, kinda, kinda loose. Um, all right, uh, what is next? He cries in unison. This is next, a little diaphragm. All right, let me get uh, everything ready for that. Ah, one thing I do have to do before I can do that is polish me bowels. Oof, nothing like it, polishing your bowels. Um, and this one does not have the bolt at the bottom. So let me, here's the bowl. I'm going to give that a bit of a clean up and a bit of a polish. See if I can make it look pretty before I assemble it on here. Biddy biddy boom. Or is it biddy biddy boom? Actually, I'm pretty sure it's biddy biddy boom. So let me have a quick buff and then I'll be back to you. Don't go away. We will return. All right, just wanted to show you this. This is kind of a before and after. This bowl is now polished. I'm gonna get some clear lacquer. I haven't got it yet. Um, and give this a coat of clear lacquer to try and preserve the finish on it. Again, not total perfection, not what I'm going for, but this is what it used to look like. And with probably 10 minutes is all I've spent on the buffing wheel with this to try and make it look half decent. Now I haven't bothered to get into all the little nooks and crannies and of course it will sit this way up anyway so you won't see under there but I appreciate that some people are even more anal than me. Um, I mean I polished the bottom and I didn't need to but I'm not going to go to the effort of doing in here. Uh, this is now as far as I'm concerned pretty much ready. Uh, you please excuse the glove, this thing is still hot. It does tend to get rather hot when you uh, are doing buffing. Um, and uh, <laughs> you guys out there, if you uh, want to get doing this, you know, polishing your own, I think I paid $66, something like that, for that uh, Harbour Freight buffer. And it's perfectly okay for doing this kind of work. And at the end of the day, once I've finished, if I decide I'm not going to do any more buffing, then I'll just sell it, and if I sell it for $30, so it cost me $36, big deal. But there you go. So, got to go get some clear lacquer now. Um, I'll be back in a few minutes, not that you'll notice, and then we'll continue putting this baby back together. Okay, see you in a minute. Okie dokie. Time to assemble a little bit more. Get your diaphragm. Get the spacer. Place that there, place this through there, get your holes lined up as best you can. Don't forget the spring. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> when I was talking earlier about the spring for the mixture, um, I kept calling it the throttle, it's not, it's the, it's the mixture screw. Let me show you on this one, this screw here when you buy the kit they don't supply you with a new spring again another bad point mr berlin and i said oh you know this one fits right over it well it's, it's not for there it's actually for here so this spring goes in here fits in nicely then grabbing your trusty bowl okay get it over the spring make sure you get it right make sure you line that up properly grab your screw wiggle it through and i just like to put these in again as i always say with my fingers so 
way less chance of crossing the thread. In fact, if you can cross the thread with your fingers, you must be the six million dollar man. Or the 60 pence man or the 60 cents man. So then just screw these down and I just like to snug them all up first. Just, just pinch them up, nothing too hard. Just a bit bite. Look around, make sure there's no gasket sticking out or diaphragm. Okay, so now I've got those all pinched up, so now let's just do a, a tighten. And I like to go a crisscross. You do it whatever way you like. This is just the way I do it. And the next thing to do, whilst, whilst you're here and you remember it, this needs to be, if you can see in there, flush. And I can feel that, and that is just slightly proud. It should be flush. So making sure I've got this down, this is what adjusts it. Yeah, so I need to back that screw off just a little bit. And that's cock. Nope, still not enough. Okay, so two nets cocks. I'm turning it the wrong way, aren't I, dumbass? That's why I couldn't do it. So let's go one nat cock, two nat cock, and let's go a nat cock the other way. That's perfect. Oh, hang on. No, nope, quarter of a nat cock the other way. Right. It feels good. Next, what I will do is I will get a flat edge in there. In fact, you know, let me get my steel ruler. Give me one second and make sure it's not on the bench. Nope. Don't go away. <sighs> oh, I don't even know if this ruler will fit in there. Oh, it does. It's hard to tell, but that is pretty much spot on. So that's good. All right. So uh, I'm ready to put this top on, but I've polished it and I've lacquered it. And because I've done that, I'm having to wait for it to dry. So uh, can't carry on any further with this at the moment but that won't make any difference to you because as soon as the video comes back i'll continue and it for you was is the next second <laughs>